Let's say you want to combine two functions, f of x and g of x. You can do this with any standard mathematical operation, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. But then there are methods meant specifically to combine functions that cannot be explicitly used on traditional numbers. One such example is a composition, where you basically plug the output of one function into another. But let's say we want to blend two functions together. Well, that gets a little convoluted. And by that I mean we need to use convolutions to do that. Before going into the math here, let's show what the convolution does. Like I said before, it blends two functions together. If we take a square wave and convolve it with a Gaussian, we get a square wave with rounded edges. If we mix the square wave with a short gradient from positive to negative 1, we highlight the edges. As a note, this is the heart of many edge detection algorithms, but relax. We'll get to those in due time. Now, we're at an unfortunate fork in the road here. There's two different ways we could go. On the one hand, we could provide another somewhat intuitive description for a convolution. On the other hand, we could just get in a train and chug right through all the math. <laughs> okay, look, that analogy didn't work, and I'm sorry. Okay, back to math. Each point, t, in a convolved signal is this integral of a pointwise multiplication between all elements in one signal and all elements in another signal that has been shifted by t. This is admittedly a little hard to read, so here it is again when animated. First we take two signals, then we flip the second one and pass it through the first, and integrate their multiplied output. That integral at every time step is the convolution. This animation is based directly off the mathematical definition we saw before. Here, it's clear how we sweep across time and integrate the multiplied output. But here's where I have a bit of a beef with Wikipedia. It has a visualization of the convolution between two boxes and another with this weird decaying shape. I feel like these are a little misleading. They make it seem like the convolution is just the overlap of the two functions, but that's not actually the case. It's actually the integral of the product of the two functions. It just happens that they are moving a one by one square through, so they can get away with highlighting only the overlap. Now, here's where things get really cool. We can actually perform basically this same operation by using a Fourier transform to move both signals into frequency space and multiplying that. This is called the convolutional theorem. There is a catch though. If you want to perform a convolution in this way, you need to use a Fourier transform, which makes the operation periodic. This means that the convolution is not linear like before, but instead circular or cyclic. So when we convolve two square waves, for example, the alpha triangle wraps around to the other side. So now let me see if I can describe how this works. As we said before, the convolution is a blending of two functions. If we blend two sine waves, we would expect to see something like this. But in frequency space, this is just two peaks corresponding to individual frequencies, exactly what we would get by multiplying the two frequency space images. With non sinusoidal functions, the same logic applies. After all, the frequency space image is still just a bunch of waves that can be used to generate the signal we want. If we mix these waves, we mix the signals. All that said, the decision between a cyclical and linear convolution depends on what signals you're working with. Now, at this point, you might be wondering what this can actually be used for, and the answer might surprise you. In fact, convolutions are used all over the place, from edge detection like we said before to machine learning. Heck, even integer multiplication uses convolutions nowadays. Don't worry, we'll get to all of these applications in due time. For now, there's a chapter on the algorithm archive right now with a few more implementation details. Feel free to check it out and put in language-specific implementation. So there you have it, the convoluted core to many different algorithms. Also, thanks to these people for helping with the algorithm archive so far. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Okay, I've tried to say this joke three times through, and I can't do it without laughing. So, here it goes again, one more time. A physicist, a biologist, and a mathematician are all sitting on a bench watching people entering and leaving the house on the other side of the street. First, they see two people enter the house. A while later, they watch three people leave. The physicist says, Ah, the initial measurement was inaccurate. The biologist then counters. They must have reproduced. Finally, the mathematician suggests, if one more person enters the house, then it will be empty again. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm gone. See you guys.